Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hello everybody, I'm Alex Bennett and this is The Ramble and we'll be going until... Uh, we'll be going until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. Uh, and uh, uh, here we go. I get, at least I got it all on okay tonight, I think. Is it, are we on? Are we okay? Are we here? Oh boy, I'm telling you. Oh, gotta move that. I have, I, I'm, I changed this whole studio around. Now I have one lonely little machine down here that's very light, and I kick it with my feet, and it moves and it changes position and so on. I could probably just shove it back in the corner and not even have to have it near me. Anyway, you don't care about that. It doesn't matter. Um, I, um, I've been, I have been working on this studio. Uh, we put in a new, uh, a new uh, Mac in here, uh, which is the only thing it does that you should be aware of is the uh, audio going out on the, uh, on the uh, oh, what do you call it? The, uh, the audio going out on uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, well, the, the, the audio going out. What am I trying to say here? You know, the audio that you're listening to, if you're not watching the picture, you're watch, listening to the audio only part of it, and that is being done on the new Mac. Boy, I am losing it. I can't even give simple descriptions of things I've been working with all my life. Anyway, speaking of things that I've been working with all my life, look at this. See what that is? There we go. That is an oldie but goodie, and thanks to Damien for, I think Damien sent it out to me, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in, in one of the many packages that he has sent me. And by the way, Damien, I'm going to need some new stuff sent. I'm going to need some Hi8 tapes that I have in storage sent to me because I finally laid my hands on a Hi8 machine so I can look at all the really old video that I shot, maybe turn it into something interesting, but we'll get to that later. But if Damien's listening, you know, that's just go into my thing and see if you can find, they say high eight on them, they're high eight tapes, um, because I've come into possession of a high eight machine that will play the high eight tapes, and then I can use those high eight tapes to make wonderful videos to show here and show on my various outlets and whatever. So anyway, where are we? Okay, so uh, I'm a little confused right now. Uh, I'm trying to get myself together. I am talking for the next half hour. Anyway, let me talk to you about for a moment about this. This is the New Tech Video Toaster T-shirt. This was the, oh, boy, maybe the third iteration of it, the original one. I still have one of the original ones, but the, the logo is on the back, so I would have to do my whole show turned away from you to see it. But this one I thought I would wear tonight. This was the one... A few years in, they decided to go kind of evil with their logo. And so that's the Video Toaster logo, as it always existed, along with New Tech up here. But look at that. It's got a skull and a bolt going through it. How's that for, uh, you know, evil? Anyway, so the Video Toaster, for those who don't know what a Video Toaster is, is was, one of, to begin with, one of the most <laughs> remarkable names ever given to a device. Uh, right now on this program, I, I do all the switching and stuff. By, by switching, I mean like when I do this, okay? That's switching. I'm switching from one thing to another, okay? Um, and uh, I, uh, so I have a switcher here that is all software. It's just a little program. It's actually free. It's called OBS, and I can switch cameras. Uh, I have several cameras here. Let me see here. Where, where's the other camera? Uh, is the other camera? Oh, well, it's, it's kind of shooting the wrong direction. I'll have to fix that tomorrow, uh, but there, there's the, uh, uh, there, here, wait a minute. I can do this. So it will look better. Ah, wait a minute. Hold on. Um, I will, ah, there, there we go. Wait a minute, there we go. Can you see that? 
There we go. There, there. So, yeah. So, you know, so I can switch back and forth between cameras and stuff like that. And that is all done really with just the software program that exists now uh, called OBS. And uh, all that used to take a lot more. When you were in a TV studio, it took like a whole TV studio uh, uh, set up with a control board and everything and literally hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment to ship uh, to shift video back and forth and to go from camera to camera and so forth and now it's just a little software program i download i put in here and it all works okay replacing literally hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment well before that a company named New Tech out in Topeka, Kansas, run by a guy by the name of Tim Jennison. My friend Paul Montgomery was part of that group. Paul is now dead. And he started a thing called Play Incorporated. And you've heard me talk about Play, Play TV, being the first regularly scheduled TV network on the Internet back in the day. But anyway, I digress. So New Tech had a bunch of people that were... They were just hanging out. They had invented one thing called uh, DigiView. And what DigiView was was a little box. It cost nothing. And they, they ran all these things off of a computer that was around back then called the Amiga. The Amiga was maybe the best computer of its time. I mean, it was sensational. So they believed in the Amiga as a, as a graphics uh, computer. And they, they built a thing called DigiView, which was a little box, and you, you take your camera and you put it in one side and take the other side, and it went into the, uh, into the computer. And then you could freeze frame pictures, like from TV shows and things like that. And that, that's, well, that was their big product, DigiView. So one night they're sitting around, and, you know, sometimes people are technical people and they're capable of technology, and other people. Uh, are not capable of technology. What they're capable of, okay, is uh, is saying, what if we could do such and such? Um, so anyway, there was this guy they were working with, and his name was Brad Carvey. Does the name sound familiar? Well, he happens to be Dana's brother. And if you ever saw uh, uh, the, uh, what was that thing uh, where they did with, uh, you know, Gar Garth and whoever, the guys in the basement doing the show. Dana was playing his brother. <laughs> that was what he was doing. Anyway, his brother was this electronic genius. And uh, Tim one day is driving down the highway in California, I think, uh, down the West Coast Highway, and he thinks to himself, gee, wouldn't it be nice if I could just flip images put TV images into, say, the Amiga, and then flip those images. And he went back, and he was in California, and that's where I think, I think Brad was living there at the time. And he said to Brad, could we do this? And overnight, Brad came up with a simple thing. And the next day, he said, watch this. And he had this little piece of hardware he had created and the software to go with it. And he pushed a button, and the picture flipped. And Tim said, okay, how much further can we go with this? And one thing led to another. And this little company out of Topeka, Kansas, came up with a thing called the Video Toaster. They named it the Video Toaster. Why? I don't know. But it's a damn good name, and you'll never forget it. And uh, they came out with this little card. It was about this big. And it fit inside an Amiga, and it had inputs for cameras, right? And uh, this program, which came on something like 30 floppy disks you had to load into the Amiga. But you could sit there, and you could play with it, and would flip the pictures, and it would make the pictures fly away. And uh, it, it, just for the fun of it, they put in a 3D rendering program called Lightwave, which to this day is now being used in major motion pictures. That came as like an extra. 
Okay, and uh, I got to know these guys because I, 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 I knew Brad. I, I started communicating with Brad. I can't remember how that started, but I said, you know, I know your brother, and I was reading about you and saw you were working on this thing called the Video Toaster, and then he introduced me to the guys who were doing it, Tim Jennison and Paul Montgomery, and we all became friends, and I was one of the first people to get a Video Toaster. They brought up an Amiga, they were the video toaster in it, and they said, here. And then the guy who did uh, uh, created this program called Lightwave uh, came by to teach me how to use Lightwave. And I literally, because I was such a video freak in those days, I was just so enamored by this whole idea that I could do these things. Now, as I say, I can do that now, a lot of it. Not as much as the video toaster did, but a lot of it with this cheap software program. And then I have other software programs that will do everything that it had done. Um, but this, literally, this piece of equipment changed the whole television industry because it showed that you could simply cr just bypass hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment to have a television studio. And what this also did, you know, every time I say, every time you make something cheaper and easier to use, uh, you democratize that particular thing. In this case, this democratized television. This meant that little Alex Bennett in his, uh, um, his dining room uh, could hook up his uh, Amiga and his video toaster, and he could start editing video and having things flop around and fly away and do credits. It did credits as well. It literally, and it sold for $1,200. Are you ready for that? $1,200. And with that $1,200, uh, you could do some really phenomenal stuff, and it replaced literally $300,000 worth of television equipment. And it got uh, Emmy Awards. Uh, it it uh, got all kinds of technical innovation awards. Uh, it was really quite an innovation for its time. And it, it really started a whole new industry of simple software and simple hardware. And what then they had to do with hardware now is all done with software. They could probably make, somebody could write a program that would do everything that the video toaster did was software, and the software could cost you a hundred, maybe a hundred dollars. You know, so it it really was quite an amazing thing. And these guys became friends of mine, and uh, uh, we uh, every year we used to go out there. They would have out to Topeka. They would have a Christmas party, and I would do my radio show from Topeka, Kansas, and. Uh, uh, they would invite all kinds of people. And they would hire celebrities like uh, Jimmy Doohan was there one year, along with, who was that? Remember that tall guy, the tall, really tall guy uh, who was in uh, Twin Peaks, the geeky guy, really tall, and kind of looked like a ghost. He was at the party. And uh, Penn and Teller used to come. And uh, it, was, it was really, it was, it was a great... It was a great part of my life knowing the people at New Tech and the innovation that they did. And then there was a big breakup with the company and a lot of bad blood because of the breakup. And Paul uh, felt that he had done a lot to build this company and wasn't getting his just dessert. So he left and dragged some people with him and they went out to California, out to Sacramento, and they started Play Incorporated, where they did the, uh, they did the video toaster one, one step better uh, all, uh, and they came out with a thing called Trinity, which was a box. God, it was not small. It was about this big and this tall. And uh, in it, it, it did all those things that the video toaster did, but it did more, and it did it with higher quality. Uh, and so that was, that was the next step. But then that company went belly up because all of Silicon Valley went belly up, and uh, I lost money and the job. Because I, by that time, was part of this company called Play Incorporated. And we had a thing called Play TV. And every day, people would do, we had a whole bunch of people doing 12 hours worth of programming a day. Like this. Uh, it, it, and and uh, all self-switched. I did the whole thing self-switched. And we had, 
one of the people on it was Revelstoke Jim. He had a show coming out of Revelstoke, British Columbia. And I had a show coming out of San Francisco, and some of the shows were coming out of Sacramento. And we had a guy out in the East Bay uh, doing a program as well. Uh, and uh, uh, it was it was innovative, and it was different, and it was the first of its kind. And uh, I will stand by that because I don't know of anybody else that was doing live television on the Internet. Plus, we were doing it. The kind of picture you're seeing here now on 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 YouTube is incredible. It's a, a beautiful picture. Uh, the picture we were putting out, not so much, you know, because uh, the bandwidth was different. Also, getting people to watch us was different back in those days because people didn't have the bandwidth to get the kind of picture you're getting right now with what is some simple bandwidth. Uh, I'm amazed by it. You know, I look at the picture here. I see it over here, and it's it's this is a 4K camera I'm using up here, uh, made by Logitech, and uh, just the whole thing looks looks terrific. So w we've come a long way from those days of that little thing that went into an Amiga, and uh, uh, and of course those fuzzy images we used to put out with coming out of live doing our our show and I actually I probably should play a little bit of it someday I have a I have a tape here what it looked like a, not tape but a file video file maybe I'll load it in one day and, and play it for you a little bit so you could see what the show looked like um, it really looked pretty good we had a chroma key in back of us and everything it was wonderful um, so that's that uh, I want to gripe about something for a moment and uh it's a story that came across today that bothered me. And the reason it bothers me is, you know, we've allowed ourselves to become dependent on certain things as a result of this, uh, this new technology that we have out there. And um, we, uh, you know, for instance, Facebook is a good example. And I, I'm, I feel kind of guilty about being on Facebook at this point. Because I feel that by being on Facebook and bringing people to Facebook to watch my show, however few come to watch it on Facebook, I am working my, uh, I, I am putting them in a certain amount of, I believe, danger. Because as you know, Facebook has gone into the business of just being data miners. And they use your data to sell it to somebody else, and that's how they make a living. Now, I don't, there's part of me that goes, hey, you're giving it to me for free. Sure, go ahead, mine my data. But they're mining data they shouldn't be mining. You know, they get it finding out stuff about me that eh, maybe I don't want them to find out. They want to find out what I buy online. You know, when I, when, I, when I go to Amazon, for instance, I buy stuff. They have a list of everything I bought. And they know what I buy, and they, I, whenever I go to Amazon, there's always an ad for something that's like the thing I just bought, you know. And I understand that, you know, but I just don't like the way it has been compromised and the fact that they don't seem to really give a good shit about it. You know, the only, the only reason they care at all is because it may wind up costing them money. And there are a lot of people leaving Facebook by the droves because of that. Well, the latest thing that's bothering me, I do all my shopping on Amazon. I am a lazy fuck, and it is the lazy fucks department store. You know, I don't have to leave the house to go buy something. I can, you know, I can get everything I want for about the same price as I can get it on Amazon because you can go into Best Buy and say, see, Amazon selling this for such and such, and they will match the price, okay? And, and Best Buy's right down the street. I don't have to wait four days for the goddamn thing to get here, or two days or whatever it takes now. It used to take two days. Now it's two days, but they fudge it, so it's really more like three. And I just ordered some coffee that's coming from somewhere else, and it's not going to be here for two weeks, all right? So, I mean, I could order this stuff somewhere else, all right? Uh, I don't have to order it from Amazon, but I do, because I'm just fucking lazy, right? Um, and I, I like the fact that I can 
return it. But I can do the same thing at Costco. I'm going to buy a TV set this weekend because our big one blew. And I'm going down to uh, Costco. I'm going to buy a TV set. It's a TCL. I like. I decided to get it because it uh, has a built-in Roku, and that's fine with me. And it's a 4K, and it looks fine. It's. I. I. It's not the main set we watch all the time. Okay, uh, and uh, from what I've read, they're they're okay. They're just fine. You know. So uh, the thing and things are going to cost like 365 bucks for a 4K 55-inch TV. So anyway, be that as it may. All right. I can go down there, buy it. It, does, it, it doesn't work. I bring it home. I don't like it or whatever. I take it right back. And they'll just take it back, you know. Uh, so I, I can do that at Costco. But no, uh, many times I'll wind up ordering the TV set on Amazon. Why? Well, because I'm too lazy to go down there and haul the thing back here. Right? Well, uh, so I buy, we, in this household, we buy everything on Amazon. Band-Aids, Amazon. Uh, coffee, Amazon. Uh, electronics, Amazon. Uh, if I could get blowjobs on Amazon, I suppose I would buy them. Anyway, now I come to find out, I think recently they went into the movie business, okay? And... Um, they started producing feature films, uh, some of which have done very well uh, critically. And one of the people they took on as a director was Woody Allen. Well, Woody Allen all of a sudden, what well, was it like uh, last November, something like that, when was it? Uh, uh, when did Dylan Farrow go on TV in early 2018? Dylan Farrow accused, once again, accused Woody Allen of molesting her in 1992 when she was seven years old. Now, a lot of people are thinking that this is like forced recall, that uh, uh, maybe it didn't happen, but she's been led to believe that it did, okay? But for whatever reason, Woody Allen has denied this, and it has not really been proven, but because of those um, assertions. Here's what happened. Um, Amazon fired the head of this movie company they had called Amazon Studios over sexual harassment allegations against him. And then Amazon executives met with Allen's representatives to discuss the negative publicity following the allegations against Price and that the next month, Allen and Amazon agreed to push the release of Rainy Day in New York to 2019. That was the movie he had finished for them. Um, he had a six-episode comedy on, on Amazon that was not well-received. Uh, and uh, two films that he already released on Amazon, Cafe Society and Wonder Wheel, neither of which were particularly great. Wonder Wheel better than Cafe Society. But uh, they decided that uh, Amazon reportedly sent the filmmaker's production company, Gravier, a termination notice last June. The email, which include, was included in the suit, says in part, Amazon does not intend to distribute or otherwise exploit the pictures in any domestic or international territories. And Gravier must therefore undertake immediately to make alternative distribution arrangements and otherwise mitigate any damages it may claim on account of Amazon's termination. What they wanted him to do, basically, was to sell those properties to somebody else, therefore uh, doing away with the liability that Amazon would have to release them or any monies lost as a result. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you getting what's going on here? Anyway, they are refusing to release this movie, uh, A Rainy Day in New York. They, he has another three pictures in this deal, and he is now suing Amazon for $68 million. Now, I like Woody Allen's work. Uh, I don't know what kind of person he is personally. Quite frankly, I think Mia Farrow is a nutcase. Uh, but that doesn't mean, you know, 
she's wrong necessarily, but she certainly poisoned her kids against Woody, including the one that we believe is Frank Sinatra's son, Ronan. Uh, and it was just, it, it's just terrible what has happened to his career as a result of insinuation. You know, I don't, if you want to not distribute his films, because it's been proven in a court of law that he raped his seven-year-old daughter, right? Then I, okay, go ahead. But if all it is is innuendo, all it is is say so, nothing is proven. No proof is being brought forward. No court of law has charged him uh, no, uh, with, with any crimes or anything like that. I think short of that, you stick with your deal. Now, you may, you don't have, nobody says you have to continue the deal after it's over with. They weren't that happy with him because the TV series wasn't met with critical acclaim like they thought. Uh, and if you don't want to do business with them, fine, but you made a deal, okay, to finance three, well, actually, probably more than that, about six motion pictures all told, okay? because there's still three he hasn't even made yet under this deal. Uh, and, uh, damn it, I'm buying my soap from you, and I'm buying my toothpaste from you, and I'm buying my, well, I get my toothpaste at Costco. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm, all this I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm supporting Amazon, and Amazon, as a result, has done something that I've approved of, they have supported Woody Allen and his mo mo movie, his movie making efforts, and so I, I don't know if I want to order anything anymore from Amazon. I mean, I know I'm, uh, it's going to be bad because I'm actually going to have to get in a subway and go to Best Buy when I want a piece of electronics. Of course, I'll still use the prices from Amazon to get the cheapest prices I can, but I, uh, I just, I, I just, you know. I don't know. I just, it just bothers me the way they're treating Woody Allen and the fact that he feels compelled to sue for $68 million, which he will probably get because there is no reason why they should try to get out of this. Maybe it's buyer's remorse, but that's not a reason you can get out of a contract. You know, or you could ask Woody, say, Woody, we really don't want to biz do business with you anymore. Do you mind if we terminate this? How much, should, how much can we pay you to not do it? But they owe him $68 million, and he wants his $68 million. And I say, give him the $68 million, or I'm not going to buy that next doodad from Amazon because I'm so pissed at you because of what you're doing to my man Woody. Uh, now, if down the line it's proven that Woody Allen is guilty of something, okay, I understand, and I will go along with, uh, uh, you know, with what you have to say about it, you know. But uh, until then, I think it's wrong of them to um, discipline him because of some assertion uh, made uh, without the required proof. All right? Okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to turn on the uh, Skype lines here. So far, technologically, everything has worked for me tonight. I've been okay. Let's see what can go wrong now. We'll find out, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, if you want to call, now's the time to call. Uh, our number here is, uh, is GabNet Live. That is our Skype, uh, uh, what is it? Our Skype uh, uh, thing, whatever. That's our Skype uh What's the term I use for it? I usually use a term for it. Anyway, you just type in GabNet Live and you will be able to call us on GabNet. Now, I don't know who else is out there this evening and how long I'm going to have to keep talking now beyond how long I've kept talking anyway. I only meant to talk for 25 minutes. I talked for, thir uh, for, th uh, for, uh, tw for 30 minutes, okay? So give me a call. Let's get this whole thing going. Let me not have to work too hard from here on in. Um, I, I don't know. If, if, where, where's Phil? Where's Scott? Where's anybody? Mm. Mm. I'll just sit here sipping my coffee. How's that? Okay. 
Is that okay? Uh, is anybody, nobody's calling. This is deadly. Oh, well, okay. Have it your way. Um, uh, if I don't hear from somebody in the next, uh, oh, I don't know, two minutes, I'm going to sign off. Okay, that's it. I I don't I hate to be. Uh, uh, oh, here we go. Here oh here we go. Here's Phil. You hear that? Here comes Phil Meyer. There we go. Uh, wait, I'm trying to. There we go. There we go. Okay, he's there. There you go. There's Phil Meyer. Hello, Phil. How you doing? Okay, and uh, you? Um, not bad. Do you have some slapback? Uh, no. no. Hold on a second oh, and add to the group a little Jeff Stein, a little Rob Alfano. There we go. Oh, and here comes Scott Boddicker. Ooh. Oh, this is going to be a, a happy, happy night. Hey, yeah. Scott. I'm not going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you weren't calling in. I heard Alec begging for people, so I thought I'd beat your ass in. But man, you guys, a whole bunch of you jumped in ahead of me. All, all of a sudden, yeah. everybody uh, said, "Okay, okay, we'll, we'll we'll join the happy fizzies party." You know? Hey, but look at look at Scott. He's a lumberjack tonight. Yeah. yeah. Who, who's making noise there with this equipment? That's that's got to be uh, Jeff. Um, it, it, it didn't say a word. <laughs> I didn't move. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway. So, so I got uh, I got some bad news tonight what? from uh, Patrick. He told me that uh, Tony's dad passed away. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh. See, and, and he didn't even have to push him down the stairs, but you know. Uh, uh, well, now's not, now's not the time to do a joke. No, I okay. Know. He okay. said that uh, two, uh, Patrick said that uh, he was in the hospital about two weeks ago. They sent him home, cancer. Uh, he had more than a touch, and uh, he passed away quietly at home. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. I'm, I'm surprised I haven't heard from uh, Shecky about that, because Shecky would normally find out about that. But, uh, yeah. Oh, it was uh, Patrick is the uh, delivered the news. In fact, let me let me uh, uh, let me let me just uh, send a quick note to Shecky because he is usually. Uh, let me see here. Um, dead. That would be the subject. And uh, um, um, <laughs> Tony's. Whoops. Tony's. Dad. Dad. Okay. And and remember, I, I received this information from Patrick, which is usually pretty accurate. Yeah, no, he wouldn't say it unless it was true. Yeah. yeah. He probably saw I don't know. How would he find out? I think he finds out everything. <laughs> uh, you know, everybody else is blocked, Tony. So, you know, we don't know these things. <laughs> yeah. Everybody else is blocked, Tony. I've, I only blocked. Uh, did I block him? I'm trying to remember if I blocked him or not. Uh, you know, we, we block him periodically. You know, I, I'm, uh, what I blocked were some of his messages because he kept sending those fucking pictures of of Scooby Doo. You know, I, or and cereal I, boxes. And I warned him. I said, if you send another picture of Scooby Doo, I'm gonna, you know. And no, I didn't. You know, I feel so sorry for Tony. I really do. You know, uh, because and this is the reason I feel sorry for mostly. I mean, I would feel sorry for him under any circumstances. But uh, you know, I mean, he uh, he he so loves his parents, you know, yeah. and he's so close to them, and uh, I, um, oh, I I feel bad about it. You know, I feel bad about it. <coughs> and plus, his yeah. father, I think, was about the same age I am. Really? Yeah. I don't know that they were in as good a health as you were, uh, you know. But uh, uh, how do you know his mother you, who was in worse health? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I th yeah, I thought his mother would was on, yeah. the, on the you know on the, on the verge tipping point Dropping there, the you know. But well, uh, you know, if uh, if the mother mother passes away, we're going to hear that. Tony starved to death because nobody made him any meals. <laughs> Again, it's too early, Phil. Uh, no, yeah, jokes, okay. no jokes. No jokes. No jokes. About okay. this. This, is, this is not uh, funny. I, you know, I love Tony, and I feel sorry for him. 
you, yeah. you know, the, the one other thing that concerns me, and this is not about Tony, you, you remember the Sopranos episode, the final episode where it just went to black, uh, <coughs> you know, and, and that was sort of to show people that, you know, when you're dead, you're dead and there's nothing else. Well, I don't uh, know that that's what it was trying well, to show. They've never yeah. explained it. And right. and the and what's his name? The guy who wrote it never explained it. He said, I just did it that way, and you can put your own decision right. on well, what that was about. Well, my decision on what it was about was that, uh, you know, one minute you're alive, and the next minute, nothing. And uh, No, you know, one minute you're on the air, and the next minute you're not. That's the way I look <laughs> at it. <laughs> you know, but that guy, Mike Allen. I don't know what happened to him. We have I no idea to... about. I, I've tried everything. I've gone through obituaries in yeah, Sacramento. Me too. I, I, I looked at the coroner's uh, uh, thing for Sacramento County, uh, and nothing. So either he's still in his house and the body is still rotting, uh, and they haven't found it yet, yeah. or uh, you know, uh, the, you know, he's okay and he just isn't calling us. No, anymore, no, no, but... no. They, that wouldn't happen. That wouldn't happen yeah. with with. Uh, I think he's just, he could be in a hospital and can't yeah. get out. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. You know, yeah. because when you're in a hospital, you got your phone. No, you but know? he may no, be in a, a, he may be in a fucking he may be in a coma. Yeah. yeah. He just ne he didn't Look, he never sounded good. Whatever happened to him? Whatever happened, it's not good. No. Right. Okay. And and you're right, Rob. I mean, I always listen to him and I said, This guy's got about a week left to live. I mean the the, the, the... he continued to smoke, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. He vaped. He vaped. He didn't he? No, no, he... no, he smoked. He, he smoked. smoked. Oh yeah. yeah he was a main a major smoker. It was cigarettes that he would consume. Yeah. But you know, the the thing is, you know, even if he's okay, it's like the Sopranos thing. You know, one minute you're on the air and you're coughing. And yeah. the next day, nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, you know. And I nobody it. knows. Uh, who, uh, who, I, I even looked at his Facebook friends to see if there was somebody that might be in Sacramento that was close to him. I couldn't find anybody that wasn't, uh, you know, sort of an odd Facebook friend. Uh, guys up in uh, Washington State that review cigars and Travis Runkle types. Yeah, but, Travis uh, Runkle was was the guy who first brought him to our attention, yeah. as it were. Yeah. And uh, here comes Bree. Bree, you're you're familiar with this situation, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Alex, just just quickly, the Soprano show creator did say recently that Tony dies in the final scene. He does. I haven't heard that. No, really? I didn't hear that. Yes. Look, look. You can look it up. Uh, he let it slip. Uh, because he's gonna, they're doing a they're doing a prequel that Tony's son is going to play. Tony, I mean, uh, Gandal James Gandal Gandal Gandolfini's real son is going to play a young That's right. Tony Soprano. When James Gandolfini died, it was in in Italy, and his son actually, I believe, discovered him in, in the right. room in you know, the after the yeah. heart attack. Yeah, uh, but I mean, uh, you, but anyway, yeah. So back to the. Uh, other case i think that you're you're right and and my guess is that he probably is just in a situation where he's unable to call in or to do anything i would think knowing the way he has been you know and i i banned him from this show so he went over to jack's show and that was fine with me you know uh because it would, that voice would have driven me crazy after a couple of weeks you know hmm. would have, i would have taken a gun to my mouth you know uh <laughs> But uh, he never sounded well, and and uh, uh, you know all of a sudden he has just disappeared, and that's unlike his mo. You know he would yeah. say I'm going away for a couple mm -hmm. of weeks, or he would call in and say I've been able to call in because, or he would write a note to Jack or something. But he because he was such a constant regular that it, suddenly his disappearance is suspect. You know. Yeah, like he fell off the face of the earth. Yeah, yeah. So, so Phil, Phil, do you have know any cops in Sacramento that can do a uh, welfare check or something? Well, I don't know his address. Uh, well, the only way I was able to communicate with him was uh, he would write me once in a while on uh, Facebook Messenger. 
And then I, I, I looked on Facebook. For instance, my Facebook oh, profile not, has okay. What number. about did you? What about his Facebook profile right now? I looked at that. All yeah. it says is Sacramento, and uh, Does it, it doesn't have what's any, the, what's the, the most last posting people said was just after New Year. Right. Yeah. And then there's been no posting since. Yeah, but he's been on Jack's show after New no. Year. No. I mean, it's no, no, no. Oh. It, it'll be a month tomorrow, I believe. Really? So it was like uh, maybe a, within a week of New Year's. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is the first Gabnet uh, disappearance, uh, a possible it, death. History. Yeah. Well, uh, Revelstoke Jim disappeared. No, that was enough, no, another. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. you know. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Here comes Patrick. Yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. he's got the dirty deets on. Uh... Yeah. Uh, hello, Patrick. So you heard about t Tony's father somehow, right? Yeah, Tony uh, messaged me. Oh, did he really? Yeah, yeah been, me too. I've been in contact with him about his dad. It's been about two weeks. His dad would, um, got sick, ended up in the hospital. They ran a number of tests on him. And there was one particular test that they were not able to complete because of his deteriorated condition. And they had figured it was cancer. And they sent him home. And I guess the diagnosis came back as cancer and it seems like it was pretty rapid yeah. rapid shit because that was about a week ago Tony sent me a video of his dad coming home uh, in an ambulance with balloons and all this stuff with the family welcoming him, uh, welcoming him home and now here it is what Thursday mm -hmm. so I think that may have been even Saturday uh, this past weekend, Tony sent that to me. Wow. So it, it, it's been very quick, him getting home and then passing. And it surprised me that it was dad versus mom. Yeah. Yeah, me too, because he was always talking about mom had this and mom had that. But mom seemed to be rallying once they figured out what was wrong with her. You know. Yeah, that, that, that seemed to be the case. And dad went downhill very quickly and never never recovered so uh i i would imagine he went in relative peace at home which i guess is where i'd want to go you know yeah yeah so. he was still joking toward the end tony told me yeah and so tony wrote you about it i guess because is he still banned from messaging me i guess he yeah. is i, I <laughs> just friend requested him at a you know i uh, you know, I figure he needs all, all the people he can to send Scooby Doo pictures to. But, but yeah, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, b -b 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 Going quickly is uh, Facebook. You know, uh, it, it is a good thing in in many yeah. ways because yeah. I've heard a lot of cases where people get sick and it drags on and drags on and drags on and they, they take the house and they take the car and you know to pay for everything and. Uh, those instances are not good. Well, here's Tony Magno. Let me see here. Wait a minute. Is that uh, a comics dealer? Well, that's got to be him. Mm -hmm. um, let me see here. Uh, yeah. He didn't... I don't think he mentioned it online at all. No, yeah. not, not... I don't remember him posting anything, so... Well, sorry to hear about your dad. To hear about your dad. My best. Period. Well, uh, I brought this show down real fast. Well, no, no. I mean, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Bill. You, you, know, uh, uh, I, I, you know, I think it's important. It was an important uh, yeah. uh, thing, and uh, it's, it's good to know that it, uh, you know, that, that we found out about it but you know if tony if you're listening and i doubt if he is at this point uh, we you know we really feel for you you know me i'm going next i can't figure out i'm tired all the time oh but, you'll outlive all of us well you know what i figure <laughs> i i may be tired all the time because i may be i may have depression and don't really know it 
you know. But it's like every day I'm tired. Just so absolutely maybe tired. Maybe it's Alzheimer's and you can't remember and if then, you had the pregnancy. Then when I lie in bed a certain way, my hands start to cramp. And when I'm sleeping, yes. sometimes my leg, I get leg cramps. Drinking yeah. enough water? That happens to anybody. Yeah, I guess that happens to anybody. Yeah, but God, I mean, I just, I'm just so tired all the time. And, you know, so if I'm the next to go, I'm the next to go. But, you know, but what have you. Uh, that is, so, so we've got a mysterious death, and then we have one that we, that we know about. Uh, and Renee's okay, by the way. I wrote Renee. She wrote back. Just, you know, every now and then she goes off the grid because she gets depressed or whatever. Or, you know, she's still dealing with uh, her the loss of her husband yeah. a couple of years ago. And and should be back when she feels like it, you know. And But I just wanted to make sure she was okay. Yeah, because uh, I want to ask her about Tulsi Gabbard and what she thinks about her. About who? Oh, Tulsi. A Hawaiian uh, senator, I think, that's running for president well, how, yeah, yeah. oh really oh, okay is everybody's running for president right right yeah mariana williamson yeah i saw yeah. i saw oac today on uh mtp daily with uh oh. chuck todd she is so fucking smart i mean yep. she is just amazing don't give me that phil she's smarter than you are uh, yeah. You know, she is bright. You may not like her, but she's bright, and she's going to be somebody to contend with. Okay? Yep. I think she's a flash in the pan. Uh, yes, yeah. no, sir. Nope. No, I think she's the real deal. Uh, you know, uh, as, soon as, as soon as the Democratic Party gets beaten by Trump again, that uh, ultra-left, socialist even type of thing uh, is, oh. is gone. What, why all of a sudden? Yeah, because we don't why, like all of a sudden why all of a sudden is the socialism? Why all of a sudden is the socialism thing such a big deal? Because it's a it's what they call a code word for communism. Oh, I see. Okay, <clears throat> uh, then I'm a communist. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, Patrick. It's a big deal because a number of the Democrats, especially the younger ones, use it. They call themselves democratic socialists, so they add in the word socialist, and my side will take that word and run with it. They're the one bringing up the word. And the thing is, if you listen to what they're saying, they're not saying anything different than a lot of far mm -hmm. Democrats did. Yeah. Democratic socialists. So, yeah. That's why they're bringing the word into it, and uh, we're just latching well, on. I, the and word. well, and well, they should. I mean, I don't think socialism should be considered a terrible thing. You know, it it evil, uh, uh, huh? It's evil. So uh, you've seen what this has done the for it's other countries. What, 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 for other countries? Okay, should we name some other socialist countries, Phil? <laughs> yeah, Venezuela, no, Denmark. Denmark, Sweden, Sweden. Yeah, and and oh, wait, a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second, hold on a second. In, in no, no, Finland. Phil, 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 in Phil, Finland. Phil. You yeah. said evil. Phil, you're a socialist and you don't even realize it. Uh, there are certain programs. You know, this country was founded on the the oh, government go. doing certain things that Somebody you couldn't do me. as an individual state or an individual person. Somebody and that's me. Uh, you know uh, that's what, socialism. You, it may it. Yeah. You know, you can call it whatever you want, but it's it's uh, our country is a republic, and it's built on the fact that uh, you know our uh, military and uh, certain oh. services, libraries, and 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 so forth uh, are sources. provided by the government. Roads, uh, just, which which is see, all falling apart. But you know, when they take individual <laughs> choice out of our hands and they tell us what we have to buy and what we have to do uh, and Phil, then they Phil, tax, Phil, uh, Phil, that's you know, not, they, that's, they, that's, they, that's, that's, that are you, one, what, what are you describing? Uh, You're not describing socialism. No, I, the Muslim uh, 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 senator from Michigan, uh, she yeah. wants to tax them 100%. And uh, the, the other, uh, you know, Ocasio, she's, she wants 70%. 90 doesn't sound so bad to her. You know, when you take the ability for people to succeed 
and 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 uh, where where do where do you get where, where do you get hey, in hey, socialism Phil? that it's that's a, it's bull you're bull Phil, it's bullshit I, I just Phil have one question here yes yeah. yes Bert. do you believe that everyone is motivated by money and money alone no there are okay. there are other motivating factors love of family yeah. greed uh, uh, you know, there, there's uh, success. There, there's also uh, keeping up with the Joneses. These are buying factors that have been been around for centuries. Mm-hmm. But you know, Trump paying the the farmers because of well, how they're getting hit by his tariffs. That's socialism. No, that that's the cost no, of our business. No, that that well, is he's socialism. Taking, taking our tax money and giving it to farmers. Because of their losses right. due to his stupid tariffs, we're Money fighting a battle. We're, we're fighting a battle, and that and that battle sometimes uh, there are costs involved, and uh, innocent people shouldn't have to suffer uh, because we're fighting an evil force that wants to steal our Phil, technology. Phil, 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 you're standing up for oh, socialism. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, that's, Rob. That's so yes, well, Rob. I, 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 it's not I'm, black I'm, and white. Rob I, I just speaking. have to respond to, to what Phil just said about innocent people not suffering. When you were not feeling that way about the poor people who go to work every day when they close the government down. Yeah. Oh, oh I, uh, you know, this was the cost of doing business, but these people will get paid. Uh, you know, you, it's, you use these things to say, oh, well, just because there's this sort of socialistic uh, uh, entity, therefore all uh, uh, socialism is good. No, it's not. Uh, what happens is, is you take away people's uh, desire to, 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 to succeed. Why, why did communism Phil, fail? Phil, Phil, I disagree Phil, with Phil, Phil, it Phil, 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 there was no incentive Phil, to work hard. Phil, People had an incentive to work hard when the tax rate was 90% under Eisenhower. Phil, socialism, no. it, 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 you're, you're, you're confusing, you're, it down you're confusing uh, socialism with, uh, it, it, with, with entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know, you're no, you're, it's you're, almost it you're almost confusing it. You're almost confusing it as the opponent of capitalism. Although you can Correct. have a socialistic, capitalistic society in which the two work in consort with each other for the betterment of everybody. Yes, Rob. And I agree with what you just said, Phil. The reason why communism failed at, in the Soviet Union, especially, is because there was no incentive to do anything. And I know that because for four years in my last company, I shared an office with a guy who, who, who was born and raised in the Soviet Union mm-hmm. and was lucky to get out. And he's been here for about 18 or 19 years. And he told those stories. Well, he out told of, me out of amazing Phil's, stories yeah. about growing up yeah. there. And yeah. you're exactly right. But that's not what we're trying and to do. And that's why we don't like communism. I mean, right. communism is, is <clears throat> not a system which, A, works to the benefit of everybody. It doesn't work to the benefit of a country. But socialism is a different thing altogether. And and I think you don't know the difference, Phil. I think Keep that's your problem. That. No, we, you don't know the difference, Phil. We're in a mixed socialist what, country. What, what, what do you say, Bree? The US. What do you say? The U.S. is is mixed socialism, essentially. Mm-hmm. It's not pure capitalism. No. In fact, China is is you you'll find more vestiges of pure capitalism in China than you will in the U.S. Charles. Yeah, it wasn't socialism that destroyed Russia or the Soviet Union. It was totalitarianism. That's it's correct. Because it was a totalitarian state, and that's exactly what's destroying Venezuela. Yeah, not it, the it, socialism, it, but the totalitarianism. Well, you know, when there are these leaders oh, that uh, have power, then these these guys uh, take advantage, and you know, even under mm-hmm. you say you you cite Denmark, you cite Sweden. These are tiny little countries. England, France, France, Spain, Australia, Italy, New Zealand, Japan, Australia. There are million people in Japan. These are all socialistic countries. Yeah, no, they're not. Yes, they are. Don't tell us what aren't. When they are, you go ask them, they'll say we're socialists. Well, you'll you'll say there's a little bit of socialism in everything, just like in my No, I'm not saying, I didn't say, no, you're, 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 in every month. Phil, you're being silly. What we're saying is these countries will tell you that they're socialistic. Yes. Yeah, and until they run out of money, and then they come to the United States and ask them for a handout. They've had universal health care in some cases for 70 years. 
Well, we yeah, can't afford universal health care anymore because we listened to uh, a leader that brought us into a war that we spent, what, $2.4 trillion? Uh, and uh, what do we got for it? And now we have a leader who spent how many trillions of dollars with a tax cut for the rich? This is a guy that also said he doesn't want to get involved in any wars and he wants to pull his people, uh, pull the people out. What's wrong with that? You well, know? sometimes there are wars worth fighting uh, because you uh, yeah. you're coming to Tell the a, you're coming to the aid of your world neighbor. Okay, if some country were doing to the Jews what the Nazis did to the Jews, would you be against us going in and making uh, making inroads into that country? Uh, no, and we okay, can't. then shut up, Phil. Then well, shut up. You know what's happening over in Syria is not our fight. And what's happening in Afghanistan, I don't know what we want there. When I but see a little dude. kid, when I see a little kid almost blown to smithereens, I say it's my fight. Well, they're just pulling on the heartstrings. That's what they do around Christmas time with the little puppies. Oh, you're so that are out you're such a, outside You've freezing. turned into such a cruel, unfeeling human being. Well, that, that, that's a way of Democrats trying to... Well, uh, yeah, to, okay, all right, all right, enough, enough, fight enough, enough, else. Phil, enough. They call them cruel. Enough, they enough, call Phil, them enough, Phil, yeah. enough. Anybody else want to say something? Well, okay. I would just say yeah. that the not our fight is exactly what people in this country said before our intervention in World War II, for example. I mean, uh, the National World War II uh, Center and Museum in New Orleans uh, publishes, they like to publish almost every day on their Facebook page, uh, some of the polling that was done in the 19, late 1930s and late 1940s, um, you know, just like we do polling now. And, you know, they often publish, you know, Here's a poll from, you know, November of 1941, you know, should the United States intervene in the, you know, crisis in uh, Germany, France, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, at times it ran as low as, you know, like single digits, low double digits. I mean, people didn't give a damn, you know, <laughs> you know, they really didn't. So, I mean, that's the similar uh, attitude that we had, it seems the isolationist attitudes uh, kind of come and go, and they seem to be either really high or really low. I, you know, I really don't know why, but, I mean, that's exactly what people said, you know, 75, 80 years ago. Patrick? Well, I go back even further. Remember World War One? We had American that volunteered to fight on behalf of France in World War One. but they felt that that was a it was a, a righteous fight against Germany at that point. So I mean, we we had an attitude here, and I think that's why people felt that way for World War II. Is we had gotten out of the war to end our wars, and they just didn't want to be in anything anymore. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it, it was the wrong attitude because that same uh, German. That we fought in World War One was worse in World War Two. So I mean well, that goes back all the way uh, after 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 the Great War, which the first war was called the Great War because it wasn't called World War One since it, there wasn't a yeah. World War Two yet, <laughs> and it was called the Great War. And the reason we after it was over, we we'd had it with war. That was an ugly, horrible, terrible discussing war and we weren't in it that long by the way we were only in it for maybe a year and a half two years uh but we didn't want to go no more wars for us so fdr even though he knew pearl harbor was going to happen let it happen because he then had an excuse because the american public went they just bombed our people look they killed our people let's go get those japs and while we're at it let's go get the germans too but that's how they got America on their side, the Americans on their side. At that point, Americans wanted nothing to do with war. They didn't want to go into, into Europe. They didn't want to go help the, the British. Nothing. They just wanted it to stay the way it was. Yes, Phil? Okay. The difference here is that those were wars. They were declared wars, and we were in it to win it, uh, <coughs> as Simon Cowell would say. The, uh, difference what over we're now doing is, the war according to our, simon our, cowell our, uh, rules of combat we're we're not in a war there we're, we're not in anything 
and either either you commit and you say that this is what we're going to do and we're going to make sure that these kids that are being uh, that, that that we're getting pictures of their suffering are taken care of or we're not but you can't go into these things halfway and they you know they even go there's no commitment so why why be there if you're not going to commit if you're going to if you're going to go in and you're going to stop uh, uh, what's going on in Syria then then commit and do it don't do it halfway and say well we can't shoot at them unless they shoot at us first and you know hey that's not a way to fight to fight did anybody uh, did anybody understand what he just said okay well nobody understood what you what just do you said. mean we're not fighting e eventually a war. People well, we were in those wait, wait, wait a minute. Br 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 Let Bree talk, then Charlie, then Patrick. Thank yes, Bree. Uh, one of the things is, and I, I, I've said it before, I'll say it again. People eventually will figure out that AOC is really the populist. She, Trump is not the populist. He, if in his rhetoric, he is, but he's not. Most of the policies that AOC is proposing are wildly favored by the majority of the people. Now, I'm not saying that we have to do everything the majority of the people say. <laughs> Sometimes that can be its own problem. But she is truly the populist. She really, when she you know, when she talks and she goes into those towns, Trump will go into a town and say, I'm going to bring back all your jobs and everything's going to be shiny and glory again. Doesn't do a thing about it. And in fact, in some ways, he's he's going to the past. But when AOC... Or Bernie Sanders gets in there, they really care about they really care about those people. If you don't see that, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't see it. Yeah. Uh, now uh, Charlie and then Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't in the Iraq War to fight and win. They called it Operation Iraqi Liberation until because they accidentally said what they really were there for: oil. That's why we don't. Go in and commit and do all that. All we were there was to get the oil and make Mr. money. Mr. Texas, we don't use their oil. Not uh, now, but when we went into the Iraq War, uh, we were. I've got news for you. We do use their oil, Phil. Not as much yeah. as we use Canadian oil. Uh, not as much as we use our own. But we do use uh, Iraqi oil, yes. And we keep them on the dollar. Yeah. 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 Patrick? Yeah, I, I mean... When we went into Iraq back in 91, that was to liberate Kuwait. Kuwait. And that was a, I think, a noble cause. And that's where I think, Phil, you've got to look at like Syria in the same way that you've got people that cannot fight for themselves effectively they may have an army they may have weaponry but they need some guidance and i don't have a problem with us having boots on the ground to help with something like that versus a continual you know um uh going back you know i mean look what happened with we got out of the Middle East after the 91 war, and we ended up going back in 2003. And now we haven't, been, we haven't left, which I don't know is necessarily a bad thing, but, you know, Syria is, is a, you know, we're dealing with the Kurds, we're dealing with Syrian people. I, I see if this it. Is wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, I have something to say. I have something to say, Phil. I have something to say, Phil. I have something to say. Will you listen? Put your hand up. I'm not going to put my hand up. It's my fucking show. <laughs> uh, 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 Patrick, I'll disagree with you about Kuwait. I mean, Kuwait bothered me because the Kuwaitis, while we were fighting their fight, weren't even in Kuwait. They were in a, a major hotel uh, in the suites of that hotel in Paris, okay, while we fought their fucking fight. Yeah, but but the Kuwaiti people weren't. The government may have been, but the Kuwaiti well, people weren't. And that would be the same as saying we're not going to help uh, fight again. You know, um, uh, you you brought up Nazis and, and Jews again. It, we're not going to help fight 
uh, to liberate the Jews because the leadership of whatever country it would be, they're not helping liberate the Jews. So we're not either because they're holed up in a hotel. You have to look at it. At well, a well, all I'm saying is, is that the, the Kuwaitis were horrible people. The, the people who ran Kuwait were horrible people. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have uh, Iran yeah. and, uh, and, and Russia uh, fighting for the opposition in Kuwait. We went in, did what we had to do, and mission accomplished and got out. Fighting for the but, opposition you know, in Kuwait. In Syria, we've got uh, opposing factors that can create uh, it's not a humanitarian thing. That's why they should just use uh, the, um, uh, what is the White Hats? The U, uh, uh, UN uh, uh, troops and forces. I thought, to go you, in I thought you didn't like the, the I thought you didn't like stuff. the UN, Phil. Yes, uh, Rob. I, just, well, I yes, want Rob. other countries to pay their fair share. Oh, yeah, right. Rob? So one of the differences there, Phil, is you talk about the Kuwaiti. We came in, we, we surgically went in, we do we had to do when we left, right? There wasn't the uh, the ideology that, that exists today, right? We, we defeated, it was an old, almost an old-fashioned kind of thing. We went in there, we had a purpose, and we got out. Today, you've got these, oh, we they're didn't not get countries. Out. Uh, what well, it, we, we, I'm we, living here now, and let me tell you, we're all over the Gulf. Yeah, but we left Kuwait after we liberated Kuwait. We didn't go after. Uh, they wanted us to go after. Uh, what was Hussein. it? Yeah, well, they, they wanted uh, us to go after Hussein. Uh, they wanted us to keep going, and we stopped. Elder Bush. Met his objective. El Elder Bush. We have uh, right. Said that once oh, we once we take care of the Kuwaiti problem, we're not going to go any further. And in spite of the fact that our generals wanted him to go into Iraq. Uh, he decided not to. He said, "Our mission is over. We're through with this right. now. Let's go home." And today we have a whole different ideology out there, and 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 you're dealing with the ISIS, and you're dealing with uh, Al Qaeda, and you're dealing with those kinds of well, ideologies. Part, where if you yeah. just pull out, you leave a vacuum. Part of the problem That's that we had well, when we when we left uh, Kuwait, when we left Kuwait and didn't go into Iraq. Um, we had promised uh, with, with Fallujah. I'm trying to remember what city it was oh. in the south that uh, Saddam oh, Hussein Hertz. went in. No, no, where Saddam Hussein went in and killed like 15,000 people. That we thought, said we were going to go in and protect those people. And when the war was over, we didn't. We pulled our troops out, and then Hussein went in and got even with them for siding with us. Okay. So, you know. Uh, uh, these things get very complicated, and they also get very ugly. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, Bree, we we've, we've been in Middle East since 2003. Prior to that, it was an in and out sort of thing. It was like a quickie with a whore. You know, we we went in <laughs> Kuwait, and then uh, we hung around for a little bit, and we no there was nowhere near as much of a presence since 2003 that we've had now. So, yeah, I mean, we're all over the place, uh, and I don't see us leaving there. I think it's going to be like Korea. I think we're going to be there in 50 years. I'm going to be, you know, in my 90s, and I'm going to still see U.S. troops in the Middle East. Yeah, how many, uh, w which country do you think has more U.S. troops, Afghanistan or Qatar? Or cutter? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm probably you're going to say cutter, right? Right. And yet, no one says, "Oh, we got to get out of cutter." You know. Is it because of the money there? Because really, it's Afghanistan. It's because of stability. Is cutter the one that's having the issues with Saudi Arabia right now, getting bombed? Yeah. Which that's. Uh, so we're yeah. also in there to kind of even the score or to to keep the Saudis oh. at bay. Is that okay, Phil? Well, the, the Turks. Is that Turks, okay? I, I don't know. The army is closer I, to the border, actually. But that that whole thing was precipitated by Trump's visit here. To Qatar? He came to Saudi Arabia, oh. and he upset the, the balance of power in a way because he gave full support to Saudi Arabia. 
we need to have an ally in the Middle East. Oh, boy. And Saudi Arabia is the strongest. Were you the one who used to say on this program how horrible Saudi Arabia was? They are. Oh, well, then why are we, why, why would you want to do business with them? We do business with a lot of people. Oh, Jesus. Phil. You know. Phil, please. It's not personal. We got enough problems already. Don't become president of the United States. Do us all a favor, will you? Yeah. Uh, I, I won't get elected because I'm Jewish. You know, I kind of hey, feel hey, I don't Phil. have to. Ha I, I I don't have to have Trump on this show. I have him on here every night when you're here. <laughs> yeah. Because we get I, the I same like stupid answers the to the same stupid questions. Yeah. Can I ask Bree, a Bree question? Yeah, yeah Bree, Bree has a question to ask of the panel. Okay. Uh, which country do you like better and why? Saudi Arabia or Iran? <laughs> and tell me why. Well, that's like uh, asking me who I, who I like better. Um, um, you know, the press, uh, press. Trump or Trump Jr. Uh, no, the yes. press secretary. Uh, what's her name? Sarah Huckabee Power. Sanders. <clears throat> or. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I don't like either one, but you know, at least one of them is is you know on our sort of on our side. They're, you know, they're, they're, <laughs> I don't know that it, it's not a it's not a good choice. I like Israel. How's that? <laughs> I, well, I would rather do business with Iran. I think they, they there's some workable stuff that's available there that we're just alienating. Uh, Patrick. I'll put it this way. It's not my personal uh, choice because I don't like either. However, I think it, it's a lot like it the, um, it, it, it's what you're familiar with. We're familiar with Saudi Arabia. We're familiar with how they do business, and it's been that way. And because of the uh, Iran shit in 1979, I think that's what, destroyed any idea in our in our head that we could ever do any business with them so it's the it's the enemy you know versus the enemy that you don't know i guess in mm. the way i yeah. would put it. so every day, about vietnam every day there's protests in iran called uh, down with america uh you know america's terrible they, they, you know, you see, you see this on the news. They burn everything in effigy. At least the Saudis, you know, extended a, a hand of friendship. Uh, you know, that that's the difference. Uh, uh, did they really, or is that is that all about mutual? Uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's it's really the way it works. Not really, well, friendship. How do you feel about well, about that? The you said, Rob. It, 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 who, you know, who you're familiar with. And if the Saudis are willing to scratch their back, and the Iranians aren't, and we've been dealing with the Saudis forever, and Iran, because of what happened in 79 with yeah. the hostages, I think that's been through every administration, Democrat and Republican, that there's an idea that Iran is an unworkable situation. And I'll grant you, when the Ayatollah Khomeini was in, that was a bad deal. Mm -hmm. And, and a, know, in a Dinajad. You know, um, Ahmed Dinajad, he was a bitch. And, and the, uh, the Ayatollah ran him. Yeah. Well, they, he was one of the guys that uh, stormed the embassy. Yeah. They had pictures of him. Yeah. He did. But again, going back to the original thing, it, it, it's just a matter of who you're familiar with and who's willing to work with you and who you're willing to work with. They're both bad choices, but, you know, the Saudi never kidnapped any of our people and, and did the same shit in 79. I think if it had been the Saudi in 79, we'd be friends with... Patrick, our... what happened in 2001? Yeah. No, those I those said, were Saudi citizens. That wasn't yeah. the Saudi government. I said mm -hmm. in 79. I think so. What'd well, you say, who Patrick? funded those? Who funded them? Uh... Probably Bin Laden. Saudi. Yeah. Well, the, but he, he was... The rich you know, people in Saudi Arabia. There, there was these... Uh, what Alex doesn't like that I say is there's this sect called the Wahhabis. And uh, 
just because he likes sushi, he, he does, you know, uh, he makes a joke. But these Wahhabis, uh, it's generation after generation being taught to hate the West, hate the Jews, and and uh, they're they're raising uh, generations of terrorists. Uh, at least this the uh, the Crown Prince uh, in Saudi Arabia uh, was willing to go against that and and create certain more westernized things, allowing women to drive. That's the only uh, thing he did. That's the only fucking well, yeah, thing he did, Phil. Then, the, sort of. then those other factions tried to get no, him. Uh, in am a I right, Bree? Bree, you, Bree you, you know the area better than Phil. Uh, 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 mm. What uh, the Saudi prince? Did he do much of anything except for that driving deal? Uh, he, he took all those not, other princes and sent them out. Of really, town. I think he's letting some some movies that, uh, movies play in there. Yes, Josh got his. Hand well, up. they are starting to make some inroads to relations with the West because, I mean, just for example, just last week, uh, they, they've they allowed, uh, over maybe the last two or three years, trying to copy off of what the United Arab Emirates has done, they've allowed the game of golf to enter into their country. And if you don't like golf, I understand, but I'm just pointing out that that's happened. Just last week, the European Tour, which is a ma is a major golf tour it's the number one golf tour in the world outside of america uh hosted an event for the first time ever at a golf course in saudi arabia and uh the event was won by dustin johnson an american player and one of the top three players in the entire world as a matter of fact he was uh i think the number one player in the world this time last year um mm -hmm. you know he's one of the most popular golfers in the world and he's an american so uh and the event was played by I think like six or seven other Americans, including like five of the top 15 players in the world. So uh, I'm not saying because they hosted a golf tournament, you know, we're like going to have world peace this time next year or anything. I'm just saying uh, they don't want Western ways. I see it kind of similar to the UAE. I don't know if they want Western ways, but they certainly want Western money. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, you know, is kind yeah. of the way I read that. Yes. Yes, uh, Rob. So, uh, yeah, as you say, they, they allowed golf there, and Mr. Trump now has made, you know, close friends with uh, the, the prince, right? When do you think he opens up a golf course there? Well, probably not very long, and if he stays true to his form in the golf industry, which I'm very, very, very familiar with because I work a second job in the golf industry, and I've been in it my entire life. As a matter of fact, I work for a a family that, if I said it, everyone probably you know would know of at one point or another in the golf industry. If he stays true to form, he'll open a golf course in about three years, and then he'll file for bankruptcy on it and sell it off to someone about three years after that. Is that what he because, normally does? Uh, yes. Trump owns, what, about maybe nine or ten golf courses right now, and he's probably owned you know 30 or more in his life. because well, Mar-a-Lago uh, is, he is for a short time. Josh, Mar-a-Lago, according to what I read in Forbes, Trump owns it outright, no mortgage. Uh, the same thing, I'm not sure about the one in Scotland, but that uh, that's a really big golf course. And it's, it's yeah, the one in Scotland is actually in some financial trouble now. As a matter of fact, he tried to get a loan uh, for that golf course for, uh, for improvements about a year and a half yes, ago. Yes, I remember that. $5 Bank million dollars and he was turned down. Was that the Deutsche Bank uh, loan? Uh, I don't believe so, no. But we wouldn't know about a lot of this because we can't see his taxes and we can't see his company finances. You know, a lot of this stuff is hidden. Um, I mean, I knew I knew a lot about Trump long before, you know, he was really popular just because of his involvement in the golf industry because, I mean, I work for, and, I, and these people love him. They think he's incredible. I work for a family uh, the 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 Cook family. I mean, John Cook is a uh, is an analyst for the Golf Channel and uh, was a professional golfer. Uh, won eleven times on the uh, PGA Tour. Uh, you know, I work for his father, who lives in the small town that uh, I live in. He owns a golf course called Cooks Creek uh, Golf Club. You know, you can look up on the internet. It's one of the uh, one of the highest rated and most upscale public golf courses in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in the top 50, so it's a pretty upscale place. Um, you know, so I've worked for the Cook family for a long time because my brother-in-law is the superintendent of that course. I've been kind of an assistant to him for about 12 years. And, you know, the, the golf industry, they really love Trump just because, you know, he's always come in and thrown a lot of money around, but he's also wreaked a lot of havoc. He's, 
he's lost a lot of golf courses over the years because they follow the business model that he does with all of his other stuff. You know, he just comes in and he mucks things up because that's what he does. And then it gets out. And then a bunch of other people have to deal with the mess, which is kind of what's going to happen here in probably, yeah. you know, another year or two. Scott, you've been really quiet tonight. Anything you want to say about any of this? Uh, no, I was just looking up mar a see who owns it. Trump does. Yeah. He owns it. Yeah. yeah. He bought it in 85 no and whatnot. Yeah. yeah, no mortgage. But it's it's more than just a golf course, too, though. You know, it's more of a, it's a hotel, a resort, a resort, et cetera. Yeah. Like, I mean, he still owns, I believe he still owns Doral uh, in Miami, which is, you know, the TPC, or, you know, the Big Blue Monster golf course and all that. I mean, he, he still owns golf courses, don't get me wrong. It's just that he's lost as many as he's owned over the years for, you know, financial issues because the golf industry is a, it's a tough industry, especially just try to survive just in golf. Mm -hmm. You almost have to pair it with something else that makes money, like a resort or a casino or something along those lines. Or you have to have it in a high-traffic destination that's warm all year round, like, you know, Las Vegas or Miami or Arizona, Phoenix, that kind of thing. But he's he's managed to make a mess. How's that, how's that, that one do in New Jersey that uh... – uh, Bedminster or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's doing okay, um, you know, but for now, I mean, but we really don't know. Like Alex said, I mean, uh, we really don't know. I mean, it, you know, I mean, we may find out 10 years from now that some of these golf courses were used as fronts to launder well, money. Let I me, mean, a, let me you ask know? you, let me ask you this. You know, the Congress now is trying to open up his taxes uh, to make them public. When those are come to light, do you think we're going to find out that he's really cash poor? That he's really not as wealthy as he would like the rest of the world to believe that he is? And that's the I'm big sure, definitely. I'm sure he's got plenty of cash flow. I don't think but, that's what they're looking for anyway. They're looking to figure out if he's got other, uh, if he's looking to monetize his business with his decisions. You see, if they want his personal tax return, I have a corporation. The corporation files a tax return, and I'm an employee. That's of the not what we want to see. We want to see his personal right. income personal. tax. Right. Well, so they're going to go after your personal tax return doesn't say anything really other than you know property uh, uh, that that I hold personally uh, or stocks that I hold personally but the business has its own Phil, tax you're not and they're going to go after those too you got to remember Do they? Donald Trump well, they Trump, are they will. Donald Trump when it comes to business is a fucking crook all right and so you know it, 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 what it says in his taxes are going to be a big problem to figure out Okay, but there's some reason why he does not want to see every guy who's ever every person that's ever run for president has made their tax returns, not just their most recent tax returns, but tax returns from 10 years back, all available. All will you let me finish available yeah. for the public to see and to see what his holdings are and so on and so forth. This is the first president who has refused to let us see his tax returns, and he's using as a stupid excuse that, oh, well, he's always being audited, audited. and while it's under audit, he doesn't want to reveal them. That's bullshit. Let's see what they're auditing, okay? Bullshit or not, uh, he, he's not required to, to show them. Now, I understood that there was some uh, I don't know legislation that, I, in place to yeah, try change to, that. Uh, to change to that. To change that. But right now, that's not the rule. Yeah, well, law. but uh, would you, uh, do you trust a man who won't show his taxes? That doesn't bother you? No. Really? It doesn't? It, doesn't, it Really? The, no, you have I, no I idea. I him to uh, do a job. Josh, you have your but, hand up. Well, just very quick. Because Phil made the comment, you know, how can they ask for his uh, returns? Um, I did hear today uh, multiple sources that said, I, I don't remember which committee this is. I don't know if it's the House Government Oversight Committee or which one is going to ask for them to open their investigation. But apparently there is a federal law that says the chairman of that committee does have the power to ask for the tax returns of any American citizen at any time for any reason. Uh, he can subpoena them at any time. So they can... That's that's the only reason they haven't asked for the last two years is because it was under Republican control. So apparently, um, even if you don't agree with the action, I understand that. But apparently, they are well within their legal rights to ask for them from the IRS via a subpoena that they. How can do you issue. like how do you like the uh, the insinuation by the president that all this amounts to presidential harassment? It is what they're trying well, to do. But, but is I'll tell keep you one thing: doing his job, even if he 
you may have had troubled finances historically, but being in the presidential position, he's able to rectify that. I think that he's a creature of habit, and everything I've seen from Trump is he tries to get more money. He's a businessman, so I think he uses his position in the presidency and with his companies to make more money. That's. Definitely. I think that's just what he does. I think that's supposition, and it's not based but, on fact. But, oh, you're you're exactly right. But because Wait, he's so not he's not a businessman. No, there are facts. All these F, all these uh, Secret Service a agents staying in 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 uh, the Trump Tower in New York for millions and millions of dollars for Donald Trump. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what about what about the emoluments? What about the emoluments? Stay somewhere. Wait a minute. Give what Trump about the emoluments clause? Dollars. What about the emoluments clause, Phil? Yeah. Yeah, what about it? Well, uh, you know, they've been trying to say that he's been profiting off of that. I thought yeah. that all profits from that Washington hotel were uh, were being donated. No, and, uh, no. That's public no. relations. No. Because that's the Absolutely one thing not. That, that they picked Absolutely out. not. Yes, uh, he's not taking any profit from that. Phil, and, uh, when big... You're, uh, you're blind, uh, Phil. You're blind. blind. Then why are, men, why are, why are <laughs> other <laughs> countries... Renting out uh, suites at ten thousand dollars a day if they're not trying to curry favor with the president of the United States. I stay at a place called the Grand. I don't Lea, care what Lea, you did. Lea, I'm asking. I asked you a question. I asked you a question. I asked you a question, Phil. Yeah. Here, here is a situation in which this president is profiting off his presidency. The money, the profit from that hotel no. doesn't go no. to Trump. Uh, yes, it does. It goes to the Trump Corporation. Phil, is, is he a businessman? He, he a business was man? until he got elected to be president. Yeah, he now still he's not is. Once a you're always a businessman. He has what about separated the profits from Mar-a-Lago? He remember doubled the, the membership remember the from 100000 to 200000 when he became president. Remember that sham of a press conference that he held with all those papers, supposedly... Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, come on. That was all for show. That was a lot. It was just stuff from the from the printer at the White House. Probably this is a big show and you're just falling for it. And you know what? Even if we're proved wrong, yeah, I'll, even if I'll, we're I'll, proved wrong, we'll see what is he hiding that he doesn't let his tax returns be maybe published? nothing. Correct. Maybe nothing. But if if he had nothing to hide, why wouldn't he just end it all and say, here. Rachel Maddow. Look. Rachel Maddow said that she had his tax return and, ah, and put that was on a big show, crap. and it ended up being nothing that was more all than ratings. Uh, well, Ra Rachel Maddow is a is a con artist, okay, yeah, just like anybody another, else on television and in right. the media. She's uh, a media person, just like Trump is a businessman. And, yeah, and so don't, you know, it, don't by the media. Yeah, Let you're you're and job. you're be, as much as you're being conned by by Trump. Yes, uh, yeah, Patrick Republican didn't let Clinton do his job. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. They, they didn't let Clinton do it. They from didn't the let man, Clinton. from the man who invented the birther. You trust anything yeah. this guy says? I wonder. I heard about audio. I heard audio of where him. he was born. I heard audio of him tonight saying that he knew he spoke to Trump's grandmother in Kenya, who said he was born in Kenya. Mm. That's 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 your that's your uh, Mr. Uh, honest. We got all his information from Alex rumors. Jones. Yes, he Patrick. Patrick's had grandmother pa in Kenya. Pa yeah, pa yeah. Patrick that's what he said it in 2011. Patrick's got his hand up. Patrick, I've I've asked and I've <clears throat> stated this past, and I still hold to it. Why does anybody give a fuck about his tax returns? Because we want to know what his motives are. It makes no we difference. We already know that. How could that be? You make no difference. Because, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I didn't know word, word one or an idea of any of the past president tax returns that were released. I didn't know a damn thing about them. Well, uh, but that's your it, fault. That's your fault, Patrick, that you didn't but, know about them, but they were available to you if you right. wanted them. I knew they were available, and I didn't give a flying fuck about them. And I still don't. And I don't understand. I mean, we had Clinton. If he's making policy decisions based on him making money, that's important for us to know. Mm -hmm. 
I think his policy decisions are based on uh, uh, pushing his agenda through, which is what he was elected to do. Look, look, you, you got a guy who just does not want to come forth with information that every other president has done. And that in itself is suspicious. But now, if you, if, if, I never looked at any president's tax returns, but you can imagine that when these presidents turned them over, that smart people, lawyers, people looked at them to make sure that they weren't, uh, they would have been called out if they were, uh, if there was uh, any kind of impropriety or any kind of position of impropriety they would have been called out that's why trump doesn't want to release his and that's if they're my being, guess Again, but they're so being audited fact. if they're being audited and there was so impropriety what? wouldn't it show up well if they're being if they're being audited and there isn't an impropriety is there any reason why we can't see it right. yes because it's none of our business what do you mean it's none, none of our business <laughs> it's very right much now our, it's not the law it. that says that he has to produce them he wants to get in our business then we want to find out what he's all about <laughs> the president of the united states i mean hillary made her tax returns uh available everybody has done every it. president everybody. since franklin delano roosevelt has made their tax returns available up uh from either three to seven years i looked it up yeah uh-huh no. I Even President Ford, him. who wasn't elected. I know what motivates him. What motivates him? He's a money. Yeah. He's someone who lo he loves wealth and the trappings of wealth and money. No. And he'll never, people like that never change. They just want more, more, more. And any way they can get it is, is how they do it. Now, the myth is that everybody else around him that supports him or likes him will yeah. also get that way. That's yeah. not how it works. But people have this belief that, you know, that they will, and, and if they just play their cards right. Although, by the, rich, by the well, way, if you're watching us right now, this is what a full house looks like. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 these are what Gab pants. Look yeah, they, uh, me too. Aces me too. over Jack. Me too. There they go. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, so has anybody heard the story about Jeff Bezos today? By the at way, AMI? do that. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. I'm going to go take a. I got to take a leak. Go keep talking. Have fun. I mean, now AMI, who's in Trump's back pocket, their best friends, is uh, is 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 trying to blackmail Jeff Bezos and to keep into it's not. A dick pic. Yeah, he's well, no, yeah. way more than that. Way more than that. Really? He had an affair with some woman, and now there are supposedly there's. Uh, there's very graphic pictures. Is this what cost them his well, I don't want to see and, that. And, and Bezos, <laughs> Bezos just, he did the right thing. He wouldn't be blackmailed. He said, okay, you want to show him? Show him. And I'm going to release all this information, which that's I think is... That's what you got to do when you get blackmailed. That's what you got to do. Absolutely. But again, there's there's still this impropriety of... What is AMI? AMI? AMI is the parent company of the National Enquirer. The same ones who paid off... The Stormy Daniels, and they buy up and all the of the same Trump ones stories. that turned on Trump. What's that guy's name that, that owns that owns it? Oh, he has a weird Pecker. name. Pecker. Pecker, David Pecker. Pecker, yeah. yeah. I love that. It's like a pack of pickled peppers. <laughs> oh, that's the film Pecker. Mr. Pecker. So you started talking. When I left the room. I, for some reason tonight, I had to take. I just was trying to hold it back, and I couldn't anymore. I, you know, you guys saying all those bad things about Alex. When, as soon as he leaves the room, <laughs> I, I have to, <laughs> oh, he's got the tape. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll see it in the reruns. Uh, 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 somebody brought up Jeff, Jeff Bezos before yeah, I yeah. left. And yeah. uh, <laughs> did anybody have a comment on that? I mean. It turns out the National Enquirer has naked <laughs> photos of Jeff Bezos. Like, who would want to see him? With it. He, uh, he, did, he, <laughs> did he screw Stormy Daniels? No, but what he Everyone, did, what he did is he wasn't going to put up with it, so he just made it known. Yeah, you Good know, for him. That the, uh, is he suing the National Enquirer over that now? Yeah. I, uh, there was, I think the National Enquirer was also mad about it. He owns a newspaper. Was it the Washington, Washington Post? Post? Washington Post. Yeah, and, and for some reason, the Washington Post did something that the National Enquirer didn't like. And, uh, about, the about the National Enquirer, and he was trying to get them to um, stop from reporting that. The oh. new neighbors moved in upstairs. What? Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. No, I, yeah, I've had it. The last couple months, the apartment up above me has been empty. 
Ooh. But just in the last few days, the new people have moved in, and they have a kid that screams and runs <laughs> up and down the hallway. Do they have rugs over the hardwood floors oh, and stuff? God, Invite no. him on the show. <laughs> I've got extra rugs. I'm you know what? You know what? You know what just there. suddenly hit me. I think the reason why Bezos is suing uh, the uh, National Enquirer is because uh, Woody Allen is suing him, and so he's got to even it all out. You know, spread the money around. It so. says here the Washington Post mm -hmm. is poised to publish uns unsubstantiated rumors of the National Enquirer's initial report. I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to describe to you the photos obtained. Or, oh, okay, I'm, I'm reading a quote here. But there's that uh, – they're trying to get the Washington Post to drop an investigation that they're doing. Okay. And so they threaten him that they would go public with these pictures if the Post didn't drop the uh, the investigation. So the National Enquirer are bad guys too. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. This guy Pecker has done nothing but – He's he, he's he's best friends with Trump. another again, you know, he got this innocent guy who is like a little, you know, innocent little angel who's surrounded by all these people who are shady in one way or another. Some of them are going to prison. Some of them are just shady. Uh, you know, you, I'm just saying this is all this craziness going on. But if your name is Pecker. I mean, your life's got to yeah, suck. Yeah, I, I'm saying that from the from the get go, your your life is shit when your name is hey, Pecker. Would Would you want your tax return exposed if it was prepared by Cohen? <laughs> you know? Can account? I tell a funny story about a name? Yeah. yeah. Yes. What Bree? Uh, okay. So uh, several years ago, I was in a I was in my car, and uh, this other car wanted to get through the. You make a left turn or something. So I, I had to back up like three or four feet. And I looked in my mirror, and I didn't see any car, so I backed up. Turns out there was another car behind me, and he was trying to get around, so I had hit him. So we go to the police department, and uh, the police guy says, well, you know, let me take your IDs, and uh, I'll write this down. He said, what's your name, sir? And I said, I gave him my name. And the other guy, he says, what's your name? His name was Thomas Crap. <laughs> <laughs> he used to have to fight as a kid, huh? You better Thomas know Thomas Crap's going to be a tough guy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> God. the laughter in that police department was unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, but you know something? The toilet. I think the, it wasn't shithead. The toilet was. Or, in, or his was first name was Fuller. The, 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 no, Fuller. the toilet was invented by Thomas Crapper. Phil Crap. Right. This guy's exactly. name was Thomas Crap. I'm not Philip kidding Crapper. you. <laughs> So, yeah, that's where the term crap comes from. I'm going to take a crap. Uh, so, uh, you know, Ray, by the way, uh, sent me a list here, and I just want to figure we just uh, read it off for you. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, he sent me a list of uh, people who have dressed up in blackface over the years. So we this is as complete a list, I guess, as they could get together here. They said they, were, they would add to it as they found more. Uh, yeah. A Louisiana House of Representatives candidate Robert Gaddy addressed, dressed like Tiger Woods for a church event. <laughs> South Carolina County Council candidate Brant Tomlinson dressed like a Jamaican bobsledder for a Halloween party. <laughs> Former Florida Secretary of State Mike Ertel as a Hurricane Katrina victim at a Halloween party. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Illinois State Senate candidate Hal Patton dressed up as a black football player. Florida State Representative Representative uh, Anthony Zappatini dressed up as his, uh, as his best friend, New York State Assemblyman Dove Hyken, who dressed like a black basketball player for a Jewish holiday. Why? <laughs> what? Actor Ted Danson... Uh, by the way, uh, let me see here. Do I still have the picture of him here? Let me see here. Wait a minute. There it is. There it is. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There, there we go. He was roasting Whoopi. That's, that's, that's me. Right. That's he was not, with Whoopi. It's not he, him. He, he was, he, she was surprised, I remember. There we go. There's, there's the picture of Ted Danson for the audience to see there. Uh, he did that while roasting then-girlfriend Whoopi Goldberg. And I think maybe at the Friars Club, and repeatedly yes. using the N word. Okay. Yes. All right. So that's 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 that. Okay. So I got that picture up there. I'm glad I still had it there from last night. Uh, actor C. Thomas Howell did it in a film called. Do you remember Soul Man? Yeah. 
All right. Also, they didn't mention in here uh, James Whitmore when he was in a movie called Black Like Me, in which it's a story about a guy who was actually a guy, a, a true story of a guy who was a journalist who dressed up, a, made himself right. up to look yeah. black. And, and, tried and he's originally a novel. Black yeah. skin. Right it's a here. great novel. You'll remember this I, one. Actress and singer Julianne Huff dressed as a character Crazy Eyes from Orange is the New Black. You remember that when she got... Uh, yeah. And I felt sorry for her because uh, I met her one day at, uh, at Sirius and she was so nice. She was maybe one of the nicest people. I didn't even know her and I met her in the hallway and she went, Hi, I'm Julianne. Who are you? You know, And she was just really nice. And I, so I can't hate Julianne Huff. I'd like to, but I can't. Actor Billy Crystal is the late Sammy Davis Jr. on Saturday Night Live and the 2012 Oscars. Okay. Jimmy Kimmel dresses Carl Malone on The Man Show. Jimmy Fallon as Chris Rock on Saturday Night Live. Paula Dean and her son dressed as Lucy and Ricky Ricardo from I Love Lucy. <laughs> Ro- oh, here we that's, go. Robert Downey. Black. Here, we forgot this one completely that's last like night. Brownish face. Robert yeah. Downey Jr. in Tropic oh, yeah. Thunder. That was yep. funny. Right? And <laughs> u- was- ultimately, talk show host Megan Kelly, who asked on her show, What is racist about blackface? Well, apparently, the long history of it is probably absolutely nothing uh, from what we're you seeing know, here. I, I think Birth they're of all a nation. pushing this stuff too far. You know, if everybody's offended over this, uh, first Birth of all, of you're going to wind up you're going to wind up with a Republican a governor in Virginia. But more importantly, uh, if this is hate, what hate is is the yeshiva that was burned down yesterday with the Schwarzstickers on it in in upstate New York. That's hate. Uh, dressing up in blackface and singing and 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 doing a minstrel thing Phil, is Phil. Is, it's is all, Phil. It's all hate. You know, it all comes out of a place of of, of uh, at least misunderstanding. But uh, what you're tr- what you probably should have said is Agreed. that it is the intent behind the action. If yeah. the intent behind the action is ridicule and hatred, then it's bad. And if it is simply, you know, like somebody says, "Oh, I uh, I think somebody said they one of these three guys dressed up as uh, uh, somebody because they really admired the person." How about Al yeah. Jolson? Yeah. Well, what the, what about ism? That's that's no, no, he it, dressed in blackface. Of course, you know, was he, he was we, he hey, promulgating hey, hate? To begin with, you're talking about something I know. Okay. okay was he no, promulgating but, you, hate? Uh, wait a minute. That I know uh, intimately because I I paid a lot of attention to that. You slept with Al, Al Jolson. Al Jolson, what he was doing uh, was an was an outgrowth out of minstrelry, which right. which hold on a second, which went on for. Years and years and years in this country. And when he went on stage, he simply was doing a minstrel thing. Uh, in fact, I have a, a, a film of him that was the first uh, sound film of Al Jolson singing called the Plant- a Plantation Act. And it was his act from the Ziegfeld Follies in New York, in which he did blackface. Uh, he did a movie in which he did a song. I can't remember the name of the movie right now, but he did a song called Going to Heaven on a Mule. And he does it in blackface. The horrible thing about him doing blackface was everybody else in the scene singing with him and going to heaven on a mule were all black. But to so that Jolson wouldn't look out of place, they all whitened their lips. Yeah. I've, I've okay. <laughs> And, and if you watch this movie, I'm just looking to see the expression on all these black actors' faces because Al Jolson in, is in the middle of them, this white guy, acting like a black guy, okay? And then I started to think about it, and I said, they probably didn't think it was that terrible because at least they were getting a fucking payday, you know? But if you ever get a chance, go back and see Going to Heaven on a Mule. It's the ultimate in blackface. Yes, Ray. Yeah, I just I I was listening yesterday. It was a great show, by the way. I listened on the way home. Um, So about 35 years ago, I was in a play called The Foreigner, which nobody does anymore. And I think I know why, because at the end, uh, all these guys come in dressed as Klansmen. 
And I was one of them. Mm-hmm. And I was so happy. It was a professional theater company. It was like my pre- first professional show. Yeah. I was so happy I was in this show. But I was at Ku Klux Klan men, Klansmen at Full Regalia. And I, and I have a picture of it. And I was so proud of it. I had it framed and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, <laughs> Don't put it in your yearbook. <laughs> yeah. I, as the years... I had it on my shelf. And as the years went on, as, I, as, as my pride in it disappeared, I realized, holy shit. <laughs> like dress well, like don't, don't run from and then, and then, and then um, but I have to say in the late 1980s it was like a li- little bit di- it was different I mean there was no uh, there wasn't so much um, of the sensitivity that we have now now I'm not saying it's good or bad I'm just saying it, it just wasn't there because at the, around the same time like about two years later I dress, I was in an opera the rise and fall of the city of Mahagoni, Mahagoni in which I was the narrator and they put me in blackface and I did the whole show in blackface. <laughs> so you're double whammy. Dressed as Uncle Sam with blackface. <laughs> yes. And I have pictures of that. Yes. Too. Yes. And yes. I was all yeah. proud of that. And no, not one person in the audience ever had a problem with it. Yeah. And this was, you know, yeah. in the early '90s. Charles. So something. Something Charlie's has got happened. His hand up. Something has happened yeah. since then. And, and, and Charlie's been in blackface all night. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I just want to say for the record that I love Billy Crystal's Sammy Davis Jr. He was great. <laughs> Did a good job. It was, uh, you better do a good job if you're going to do that, right? Yeah. Patrick. I thought it was a tribute myself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like what, what Ray was saying, it, it, it all has to do with contact, like Alex said. And what, what was it part of a production was, you know, were you able to get an African-American to play a part? If that wasn't the case, then do you substitute? And if you substitute, do you go as far as coloring the skin or not? That's a debate that can be had within that circle. But if they decided to, I don't think it would be offensive because the idea would be, if it would be like an Uncle Remus sort of thing, having a white guy singing as a slave would not make any sense visually. That's why they call so, it acting. Right. So, I mean, it, it, it depends on, on, you know, I, yeah. if people get offended by shit, they better be offended for a good reason, not just because. Wasn't, then, uh, what, I'm trying to think, didn't Spike Lee do a movie in which they did blackface in the movie as well? I'm trying to think. There's something I, and it was about. It was oh boy, I'm I'm I'll have to go look it up. I I I I'm, I vaguely remember the film. It was not one of his major films. Jeff, you've been very quiet tonight. You I don't think you've said a word tonight. I know this uh, whole subject yeah. is a little bit. Uh, I don't know. I'm just not that. I'm not interested in it in a certain way and. And and at the other perspective, I uh, when you guys were all talking about the wars and all of that, to me they all turned out terrible. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And hey, Alex, the the movie was bamboozled. Bamboozled, and there were there was blackface in there, wasn't there? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, who was in it? Do you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, Damon Wayans. Uh, Savion, Savion Glover, yes. Jada Pickett Smith, um, Tommy Davidson, Michael Rapaport, Moss Def, Thomas Jefferson Bird, Paul Mooney. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, it. It's, I, I don't think there was any blackface then, because those are all. They were there all black. Black. No, there was. I just. Yeah, I just. There was up. one that you mentioned that wasn't black. Yeah, uh, black actors donning black face makeup. Yeah. Really. There were black actors in blackface. Oh, it was black actors in blackface. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. 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 Now, it wasn't that they were, that there was blackface, but they actually were doing they the white the, lips. The makeup and, on. Yeah, the white yeah. lips thing and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, I just wanted to bring this up getting towards the end of the program. Uh, Twitter's financial results for the fiscal fourth quarter of 2018 revealed the social media giant lost 9 million users. 
good. In uh, uh, in a year to year basis mm-hmm. from Q4 of 2017, monthly active users fell from 330 million, not like Facebook has got what two billion something like that. Uh, earlier to 321 million. So I wonder if this is a Trump factor that uh, people got so disenchanted with it, or maybe it's just. I mean, I would have thought they would have gained people with with the tr- if Trump. If you don't follow somebody, you don't see their tweets, right? Um, right. You right. have to look for right. them. Right. What are you holding up, Patrick? Oh, that's Alex. Heaven on a mule. Can I have some of the black it, Yeah, Heaven on a mule. Yep. There it is. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yep. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah. And even the black people in it wore the white lips. Right. I hate the white lips thing. Yeah. That just bugs the shit. Well, out that's me. supposed to be that you're a minstrel. You know, that I know, was minstrel. I know. Even in the from a time when things were yeah, so awful. There were very few there were very few black people in minstrel shows, but there were quite uh, enough of them because they were talented and they were musical and they they were good performers. And so when they performed in a minstrel show, they painted their lips white to look like the rest of the white guys who were dressed up as blacks with the white the lips yeah. traditionally kind of white. So yeah. And did you see the latest thing about Gucci? That they had a pull of they had a sweater. It's a nine hundred dollars sweater, something like that, or sweater. Oh, with the matter, uh, yeah. And yeah. and you pull it up over your face, and it's I got it's like black here, and then red lips here, yeah. And the mouth yeah. is open. They discontinued it, right? Yeah, they discontinued it. Who made that yeah. flub? Who made that uh, mistake? Some drunk guy, Gucci. huh? I mean, uh-huh. that's really kind of amazing. And there was one other faux pas I heard about, but I can't remember it now. Are uh, those available at the Trump Gucci store? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we seem to hey. be... What? Sorry, I just... Never mind, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Alex. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I well, would. I just wanted to say real quick, um, with with this uh, Trump saying he's being harassed. Do you remember when Trump was harassing Obama about the birther thing and all that shit? Yeah. Okay. That, I don't know if anyone brought that up. What a fucking hypocrite. That okay, wasn't interfering with legislation. Yeah, but but no, but you know, no? there's a difference. There's a difference between harassment and being held to account. And he's being held to account. He's, he's being, being criticized. Being, he's not being harassed. They're doing their job. Every president is yeah. always scrutinized by Congress to some degree not or like other. This. Not like well, this. Not like well, because he deserves. What do you mean not like he's, this? He's doing all kinds of shit that makes it. Uh, makes yeah, it he's harder. getting a lot done. Clinton. Oh, Clinton yeah. wasn't. He isn't getting bullshit. shit done. He's Phil. Shit done. He's yeah. watching TV six hours a day. Yeah, did, did you hear about that? Yeah. Sixty percent of his time is what they call executive time. Yeah, executive and, time means there's no formal meetings, but they do other stuff. Oh no, it means he does Shit, nothing. Why do you believe this fucking liar, it, Scott? That's would amazing. you do that again, Scott? Do that again. There, it's, it's jerk off time, Phil. Yeah, yeah. And this is this is not like sixty percent of his time is spent. Uh, you know, out of a 24 hour day, this is 60% out of the work day. Mm-hmm. That's it's not uncommon. Uh, even Obama Remember how had hard he like was going to work? Remember how he, he teased golf? about, yeah, oh, I wouldn't be playing golf. I'm going to be in the White House working. He's a liar, man. He's just an unbelievable liar. Like, it never ends. It never ends. Now, that, Josh yeah. can verify this. Is does when Trump plays golf? Is that playing golf? Oh God! There you go with the jokes when things are true. <laughs> nah, you know, because it's bullshit. You're attacking things that are bullshit. You know. But these are the it things doesn't that matter. He attacked, he's, he's these do, are the things getting, he attacked the, tr- uh, the other presidents on, especially Obama. It's a known fact. It's a known doing? fact, Phil, that Trump's a lazy fuck. That he doesn't he, read. He doesn't read any of the memos that are sent to him. Doesn't read any of the papers that are sent to him. Uh, wants everything told him because he doesn't want to have to read it we've got an illiterate president for christ's sake yes jeff 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 the one thing he likes to talk about is lying and making (laughs) stories yeah yeah good yeah he's and he's very good at that by the way tells although he's not that good because the beginning the beginning of the end is coming (laughs) the beginning of the end for trump is coming it's coming all these investigations it's coming soon you'll all have your chance it'll be a phil free friday (laughs) thank (laughs) fucking god (laughs) anyway it's been a good night tonight it's been a nice discussion everybody 
Rob Alfano, thank you so much. Jeff Stein, Josh Wheeler, uh, uh, Bree out there in Dubai, uh, Ray Renati out there in uh, Palo Alto, Palo Alto. Palo Alto. Yeah. Phil Meyer out there, uh, Scott Boddicker in Texas, and <laughs> Charles Wallace, who's now, you're where again now? You're in Arizona? Arizona. Yeah, and Patrick Blazik in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, why don't you give them a big wave goodbye, okay, so that they can uh, see your happy faces, and I'll wave back to you. There we go. Okay, that's our Citizens Panel for tonight. That was a good one. Yeah, good one. Nice, rich, healthy discussion of all things. Of all things, you know, not just Trump tonight. Hey, listen, that's it for uh, for, for tonight. Uh, we'll be back here again uh uh, what is it, uh, after uh, Damian Chaplin with the uh, exchange tomorrow night at 9.30. By the way, next is uh, The Intersection with Jack Bishop. I'll see you tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice night. <laughs>